Hey everybody, welcome back to Trek to Yomi Breakdown. This is the last video in this three-part series of breaking down and summarizing the whole story of Trek to Yomi. And in this video, we will also discuss all four endings. Yes, if you don't know, there are four endings in this game. Stick to the end to find out. Let's not waste any time and let's get right into it. After Hiroki left the heights of the mountain, he arrives at the literal catacombs of hell. Bunch of skeletons and skulls lying around and even piles of them forming the pillars and the walls. We are finally nearing the end of Hiroki's trials in Yomi. We are greeted with this light and the sound of a disembodied voice who questions our choices from earlier. If you pick your duty, it will guilt trip you about leaving Aiko. And if you pick Aiko, it will guilt trip you into saying that Voldemort will kill more people. There is literally no correct answer here. Regardless, the spirit will transport you to the exit using this obelisk. When he walked through to what I would call is a gate, we then understood that Yomi's main purpose was to simply torment Hiroki with these visions and illusions as his punishment for whatever he has done. But this didn't stop Hiroki from pushing forwards despite the guilt and torment that he encounters. And even when we thought that we finally arrived at the peak, Yomi throws even more illusions in Hiroki's way. Up to the point where Hiroki finds himself, or should I say, a version of himself. This spirit right here is named Aramitama. It is an aspect of a spirit that is the roughest and most violent. Basically a violent Hiroki. And I will tell you, this guy is really rough. But regardless, Hiroki defeats him as he refuses to accept that he is someone violent. At this, Nigitama appeared. Nigimitama is an aspect of the spirit that is peaceful, quite the opposite of Aramitama. Interestingly, according to Japanese folklore, in order to bring out the Nigimitama, you should perform a pacification rite, either by some sort of prayer or by an offering. But here, Hiroki would just have to fight and beat that part of himself. And the last, we are here at the end of the story. Basically, what Nigitama is saying is that Hiroki is trying to do multiple things at once, and because of that, he was not able to accomplish anything. He told Hiroki that he should pick which path to walk so that his mind will be free from distractions, and he can finally achieve what he sets out to do. At this point, three choices are presented. This will directly affect the ending of your story, but none of them are inherently good or bad. It really just depends on what you choose. However, there's a secret ending that we will also break down in this video. If you choose Aiko and the Path of Love, Hiroki will pierce the spirit of Master Sanjiro and say that there should be others who will take up the responsibility of defending the city when he is gone. Nigitama would give Hiroki a borrowed time and that after all scores are settled, Hiroki would have to return to Yomi to be with Aiko for all eternity. So Hiroki wakes up literally in the same place where Voldemort killed him. As he looks back into the dojo, we can see the silhouette of Kagero from afar. So Hiroki went after him and threw all the remaining bandits in the city and passed fires and explosions. When he arrives at the dojo, he indeed found Kagero. And then this happens. So we fight Lord Voldemort, aka Adult Kagero, and even Tom Riddle, aka the Young Kagero. Sorry, I can't stop with these Harry Potter references. All the same, in the end, Hiroki defeats him. He put Kagero into death's door, and he allowed themselves to be eaten by fire. Kagero will go into oblivion, and Hiroki back to Yomi with Aiko. If you choose Master Sanjiro and the Path of Duty, you will have to depart from Aiko forever. So, Hiroki kills her spirit and reinstates his vow of duty to Master Sanjiro. The Nigitama will give them another life as balance is preserved, and Hiroki will wake up in the same place where Voldemort killed him. Same thing happens, he wakes up, he sees Kagero from afar, went after him, and then... I will not rest until this land is rid of men like you. So, he kills Kagiru and he left the building, probably to look and rescue any survivors because that is his duty now, that's the path he took. And apparently, he was successful in rebuilding the city back up. Because at the very end, we see this scene which I believe is a symbolism of when Master Sanjiro was teaching him the duty of a samurai and when he himself is teaching it to a new generation of samurai. Although this shows us both him, I think the symbolism stands. The last option is to choose to reject the gifts. Hiroki will think that the choices given by Nigitama is just an illusion, he will get angry and beheads the Nigitama. 
the Ningitama will say harmony is lost which symbolizes how Hiroki left behind balance, love, duty, and mercy. And he went back to life seeking only strength and power. Same thing happens. He sees Kagiru, he goes to the dojo, and then this happens. I left weakness behind. I will lose no more. Please. Please. So, after that scene, he probably went back to re-establish the city. Not to preserve and protect them, but to build his very own army that will help him conquer many lands and gain more power. Literally just like what Kagiru did. And sure enough, at the very last scene, we can see him wearing an armor very similar to Kagiru as he's reigning far on lands that he wants to conquer. However, as I've said, there's a secret ending that you can unlock if you manage to kill Kagiru in chapter 3 before he can kill you. This is extra difficult to achieve. Anyway, what will happen is that the attack will end there. Hiroki probably saved a few more survivors, but in the end, he finds the body of Aiko and he mourned in regret because he was not there to protect her when Kagiru attacked. So, as an atonement, he abandoned the city and lived in exile because he doesn't deem himself worthy of being a samurai anymore after he failed to do his duty, which is to protect the queen, which is Aiko. But at the very last scenes, we can hear Aiko saying that she doesn't blame Hiroki for not being there to protect her, and she will wait in the Yomi for him to be with her as well. And there you have it. This is the full story of Trek to Yomi. If I would have to rate how good the endings are, this will be my rating. Feel free to pause the video right here to read my reasoning. But as I've said before, I will prefer an ending where you guys will subscribe to my channel and watch the rest of the video I will do for Trek to Yomi. Because yes, there are two or three videos I plan to release after this which will explain some elements in the story that is not explained yet. Basically just like what I did to Ghostwire Tokyo. So, thank you for sticking to the end and I hope to see you on the next one. Bye for now, bless up.